what does it mean to raise an animal from the beginning of its life to the end of its life in a way that's ethical, that's humane? I think the first piece you need to just be comfortable with is that making an animal into meat, you know, is is something you're comfortable with. Because I think that's the biggest question, right? And so Certified Humane actually goes all the way through the death of the animal, how it's killed and handled at, at processing. So I, I put that out there just to say, well, that's, you know, this is all about producing an animal to die for meat. And yeah, that's, a, that's not necessarily, that's something people struggle with with the word humane. And I understand that. Like I have space and empathy for that. It's a, it's a complicated decision. And one you have to be comfortable with at the outset to say, this is an animal that's going to die to feed me. Yeah. So we should pause on that because I actually just uh, two days ago read a paper that argued that, you know, the killing of an animal period cannot be humane. So it's impossible. Mm -hmm. And so, and that's an argument, just like you're saying, we, we could make. But if we now on the table kind of take as a starting point the idea that it's possible to kill an animal for food in an ethical way, if mm -hmm. we take that as a starting point, yes. so we won't argue about that. It is worth arguing about it elsewhere, and it probably will. I will probably talk to a few vegan folks, and we'll talk about the, the vegan diet. I'm fascinated by it as well. So I'm torn in the whole thing. But if we just take that as a starting point, what then is an ethical, humane way to treat an animal? I look at ethical, humane animal treatment as the major phases of life. So um, conception, birth and mothering, diet. Those are kind of the major touch points of life. Mm -hmm. So what we're looking at is evolutionary approach which means is the animal eating what it evolved to eat primarily mm -hmm. uh, is the animal primarily outdoors which is how all animals evolved um, given when the climate's appropriate for it there's certain you know times when you can't have animals fully outdoors like here on our ranch we um, have had issues with like you know, cold weather and things. But oh, okay. um, so if you have, if you have, you know, appropriate weather conditions, is the animal outdoors? Um, is the animal able to nurture and engage with its young? Um, those are the kind of key touch points, but it's really the, the birth of it. Let me start this one from the scratch. Sure. Um, okay. So when I'm looking at, or when I, when I consider what's humane, setting aside the death part, mm -hmm. I look at the evolutionary diet, access to the outdoors, and ideally, spending the majority of its life outdoors, low density, so animals spread out, and um, engagement with young, social interactions, and that's all kind of- Social implicit. interaction is a cool one. I mean, I, I also read an article that like, they're, that like cows, for example, have social, like they have friends. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's fascinating. I mean, that, that piece with the young, social interaction with the young, social interaction with each other, that uh, at a basic level, I'm sure that interaction is not as rich as humans, but there, that, that piece seems to be part of the humane picture. And you said also just a quick comment, uh, ev evolutionary diet, meaning the diet that they were evolved to have. And that's pretty simple. You can look at the physiology of the animal and figure that out. So ruminant species are lamb, goats, and beef, and they have five stomachs. They're, they evolved eating really low calorie, high fiber foods. That's why they've got all the stomachs. They need a lot of processing. You or I were to eat grass, we'd die in a week, right? We, we, our physiology can't handle it. Cows were built and evolved to eat this very low calorie, very high fiber, very low density food. And they walk around slowly, they're moving constantly and they're eating it. When we put them on a corn fed diet, that's the opposite of their evolutionary diet and their systems really struggle with it. Mm -hmm. Now, pigs and chickens are different. Pigs and chickens are omnivores and pigs will happily eat chickens, for example. Yeah. <laughs> Our pigs on the farm will hunt and kill rattlesnakes yeah. and eat them. Um, you know, it, it, it's there, they, they have, and they enjoy the, they enjoy all of it. <laughs> they are, they're, they're omnivores. So that you often see, and I, I've seen people try to raise like a grass fed chicken and that doesn't exist. I mean, they need a higher omnivores are, eat everything. They're what's called monogastric. They got one stomach mm -hmm. and that one stomach needs higher density nutrients. So in the case of, um, chicken, if you're to do, you know, look back, in American history, in, in the 1950s, it took, you know, commercial chickens took like 54 weeks to come to full weight. Mm -hmm. 
now it's two and a half weeks in a, in confinement farming on our in our systems it's like eight to ten weeks typically so it's a very you have to give them some amount of nutrient density um, but there's a the, the idea that no grain because you that's a misinformation for any type of commercial operation free range regenerative pastured everything you're going to have to have a grain feed to get any type of it's actually i think for the case of chickens unless you're in a place with like tons of natural seeds and grubs and worms and stuff to eat really challenging for the chicken so you're, you you got to give them some high density high calorie food different from the that's the evolutionary diet is a really key thing that's the fundamental thing for health and it's also interesting because that the evolutionary diet ties to human health i've looked at the nutritional analysis on on all of our products and it's the evolutionary diet is for the case of beef and lamb gets their omega-3 to 6 ratios the same as wild game. So it's not like beef is really radically different from elk or ruminant species, right? If you feed beef an evolutionary diet, their nutritional profile is the same as wild meat, as a wild ruminant. 